All right, guys, welcome back. This is the episode 12 of On the Range with Oak Creek. And this week we're doing all of our renovations on the lodge, getting ready for our hunters. So if you guys want to follow me, we're going to take a look inside and see what's going on. Today, um, we've remodeled almost the whole lodge. Um, I think the only thing we've got left now is my office and, and the, um, to, to remodel. But Kenny's done a lot of the remodeling for us. So, but uh, what he's doing is in the, um, you guys that have been here before, in bedrooms five, six, and seven, we're kind of older bedrooms. So we're going back in, we've repainted it, we've recarpeted it, we're putting um, the crown molding back up and um, just making it look a little bit newer. But um, Kenny's working on the crown molding. We had to match up some colors from um, crown molding from years and years ago. So he's really struggled trying to get everything to match up. But now he's mitering all his edges and, and fixing to start putting the crown molding back together. Kenny, you want to explain to us what you're doing? Uh, basically the crown we're, we're putting up, uh, matching it up as best as we can and, and putting it up against the ceiling area and uh, Cut our edges backwards and upside down and backwards. To get our cuts right. Uh, and then the miter this out and then when we come we go into the room, the two miters will come the miter will come together and form the corner and just uh, follow it basically around the room. And we do the same thing on the base trim, get everything to match in and get everything ready to go. Basically we're coping in the, the, the cut. We made our cut, now we're gonna cope it in so it fits, so it fits the piece to make the corner that's, all, that's the piece that we've already got up. And then we cope this in, this, this We'll fit our cut in our piece that's already installed inside. This coping is uh, really time consuming and it's tedious in itself to get it exactly right. And a lot of times you have to, to um, tweak it once you get it coped. Corners in, the, in your your rooms are usually not perfectly square, so that that creates where you have to tweak the corners to make them tight. Especially in a house that was built in 1955, yeah. <laughs> it's an old one. Yeah, your newer your newer structures are always better than the older the older style that they most everything was built out of oak. They didn't take the time that. They didn't have the tools either though back then to make things as good as they are nowadays. Basically what you're doing when you cope something, when you saw it on the angle, then it leaves the, you can see the outline of the stain and you want to try to cut it as close as you can on that outline to give you, to where it fits the piece that's, there it'll, so it fits the, the, the groove or the contour of the piece that's already up. Okay. Good deal. Kenny does a really good job. Um, like I said, he's done most of our remodeling out here. He, he's very meticulous, and that's what I like. I like it. I mean, he, he, he builds everything really tight and secure, and it looks good. He takes his time to do it right, um, so it looks good. There's no rushing through it, and, you know, it, I guess your work's your name, and, and, yeah. that, and that's kind of what you stand behind. It's, um, yeah, it's always been really good, solid work, and looks good, and... Um, I've always been really pleased with it, so. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm a, I am a perfectionist. I, I, 
There's nothing wrong take, with that. Take pride in my work, and like I say, I, I do um, take the extra time to make sure it's right. Uh, because that's that my name's on it. I, I want my customer to be happy, but also my name's on it, so I expect I want it to be right when I'm when I'm finished. So. Good deal. Well, we're gonna take them in. Oh, sorry. I hey. appreciate, appreciate all the work too. Oh, no you me over the time. So. Well, we're gonna take you in, and I'll show you where he's getting started, and um, show you what it looks like now after we've already painted, we've already killed, so we've already painted, we pulled the carpet up. So he's, yeah, we've text, retextured the room, so. We'll show you what he is um, getting started on the on the um, all the crown molding and the and the base molding and all that, and then we'll show you a finished product. So, follow me. Let's go look. Okay, uh, this is going to be the new pro shop right here. So, as you can see, this is that piece that King was working on. He's going to add that piece on one side or another. I don't know which side, but he's going to add that piece. But these are all old doors. Different molding, different. So we have, we had, we really struggled trying to get it to match up, but I think he did a really good job. So uh, new paint, new texture. The, we're gonna have hardwood floor in here, and we'll be coming in next week. So uh, we'll show you the finished project. All right, guys. Uh, everybody always sees the chandelier in the lodge, and the first thing they ask is, "How do you change light bulbs in it?" Well, today we're changing light bulbs in the chandelier. So we're putting in new fans, brand new fans. The old ones had burned up. Uh, changing all the light bulbs uh, takes four of us to do that. If you, if you ever want to ask, what's that joke? How many, how many old creek employees does take change the light bulb? Four. So <laughs> Shane, Nick. They're actually doing it. Me and Marty are, are, are supervising. We're sitting back and, and handing them parts if they need it. You can see, you can see the uh, scaffolding set up, uh, so you can kind of see what we're doing. No big deal. But um, a million questions about how we change the light bulb. Now you know. All right, guys, we're here with the, uh, I don't know if it's the unfamous or the infamous, or I don't know how you want to, you two. Nobody knows James. This is James. You know, all you hunters out there that know James is a god, this is the this is the new James, I guess. Everybody knows Cody. Cody's been working here on the ranch since you were, well, 13, 14, yeah. 13, 14 years old, on and off and everything. Got it for us last year, finally got him back up. Cody is a concrete guy. Uh, James, most of you know, is, does a lot of concrete and construction on in the summer. But this afternoon, they're coming back after work and they're they're laying a footing. They're gonna put us a footer around our, our fodder barn, and uh, so I came up to harass them. I've I've got my I've got my concrete boots on, so I can I can work out and I can I can show them how it's done and get in here and yell at them and scream at them and show them show them what's going on, but. No, seriously, they're going to kind of tell you what it takes. And I know this is basic stuff to some people, but some people don't know. Um, we're going to show you why we're building this wall. I guess I can tell you why we're building the ball wall. We're building about a, what did we, what did we decide on? A six? Six, 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 six foot tall. wall right here. That's going to basically level this area right up here up. Um, and that's where we're going to put our, our grain bins and stuff for our fodder barn so uh for our tmr mixer so we can put all of our grain and stuff right straight into that tmr mixer whenever we get finished working and, and making our feed so they're building us a wall that will come back in and fill it and make it all leveled out uh put us a little pad up there for our silos but i'll turn it over to the experts to tell us why they're doing these footers and how they're doing these footers and what makes this all tick so have at it guys well, the first thing on the footing is you, you're building a, a good grade subgrade to uh, set your wall on. So you're taking it down to the normal dirt level to where you're not building on foot, on fill. As you can tell here, it's three foot deep, or Marty will show you here in a little bit. But we had to get below the fill to get down to the grade to where it's solid dirt. So we're going to pour an eight inch footing in here and put a half inch rod all through it. 
and we'll put our uprights in it and then we'll come back in and we'll set an eight inch wall on it to the six foot height and um, they can let it cure out and backfill it with their dirt and then we'll get their pads poured for them and they should be in good shape to get their feet into the grinder. So uh, that's, that's about it. I mean, good, simple. We'll show you uh, the concrete trucks ought to be here in a little while so we'll show a little bit of that and, and as they're pouring the footer and all that and show you how concrete works done. So just, I guess everybody else that's done this, we've introduced them as a nickname. So I don't I don't know that I know good nicknames for you two. <laughs> you might have just done it. Amish, little Amish, and oh, I Inferno. Call, I, could, old, old name, I, I could call you Inferno. Yeah, old Redbeard. Cody was here when we um we were in Florida and the in the and the barn burned down. And I gave him a hard time about burning my barn down, but he didn't have anything to do with it. But I sure like giving him a hard time about it. Cause it's the hardest call you'll ever make is calling your boss and telling him that his barn burnt down with his brand new truck and all of his four wheelers and all of his tools. And I don't have anything to do my job with tomorrow. <laughs> it was a bad day. Yeah. Bad day on Oak Creek. Very bad. But anyway, y'all stay tuned. We'll show you pouring a little concrete. Hey guys, uh, keep following us on Facebook and, and YouTube and just keep watching our episodes. So we're going to get this finished up now. We're getting ready to come in here with our skid steer and, and fill this all in and get it ready to go for a concrete pad. Uh, just keep watching each episode and we'll keep, keep you updated and keep letting you know what's uh, going on with the ranch this week.